Good morning, traders. This is a live trade recap. I took five trades this morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. I have them all on video. I'm gonna go over everything that happened right now. As always, I start with Weeble on the Markets tab. I click on Top Gainers one day, click on All. Then I organize by volume. I'm only interested in the top 10 stocks as long as they have a float size of less than 100 million shares or 110 is the absolute maximum, unless, and this happened today, where the number one stock was below 500 million shares for float size. If it's below 500 million and it's the number one by volume, then it goes on the list no matter what stock it is, as long as it's in my price range. The Here's a, an example of one that's in the top 10, but is above the 110 million cap, right? So if it's number two through 10, it's gotta be less than 110 million shares. If it's number one, it's gotta be less than 500 million. So that's a little detail. And I don't care that it's AMC or GameStop or whatever. It has nothing to do with the ticker symbol or the hype behind it. If it meets my requirements as far as the float size and the price, then it goes on my list. So let's take a look at the video. So it took a while for the uh, top 10 stocks to kind of settle in to the list. There was stocks coming on and off the list uh, from 930 to 940. But so my first trade wasn't until about 9.43 and you can see it setting up right now is with BNTC. This line represents the high of the previous day and or the pre-market or aftermarket, whichever is higher, that's where this line goes. And then I need to see the price break out through that line. And then on a pullback, I can get in. That way I guarantee that at least in the short time frame, I am trading with the trend that the trend is going up. I don't trade reversals, even though obviously this was a really nice, um, run back up to previous highs. This is a very risky trade to take. It do, This doesn't all, actually this rarely works, probably maybe 25% of the time if you're lucky that, that'll work, that trade. So I uh, just wait and let, let it get back to those previous highs, break out through, and then when uh, it pulls back, then I get in. So let's take a look at the first trade. So there it is breaking out here. You can see the previous high was from the aftermarket. All right, so now I'm waiting for a one minute candle to make a new high. It comes right here. So here I'm hovering over this candle. The high is 569. I need to see 570 or better. So let's keep our eye on this little bubble. 570, there it is. And you can see that I've triggered my hotkeys and I get filled almost exactly where I want to. Uh, less than one cent higher. So now my stop loss, I immediately move up roughly to where I think it's going to be. I can't really tell um, where that bottom of that candle is price wise, but I get it very close. That way, if this thing flushes down really quickly, I'm already protected from a big uh, drawdown. And then I move it exactly where I want to, which is one cent below the previous candle. So now I have uh, a chance to use my two-hour calculator here and, and calculate my profit target. So that's what I'm doing right now. You can download this from the Facebook trading group by the same name, Trading Armor. Now moving my profit target into place. I think the scale was off on this uh, chart, so I had to uh, adjust it to get it to where I want the uh, profit target. So now that trade is fully automated. I don't have to worry about it. It's either going to stop me out or hit my profit target. I don't have to uh, go back and look at it unless I want to. So now I'm looking for other entries. And uh, so this is really interesting. R-E-L-I popped up on the uh, in that top 10. And you can see I'm putting it on the list right now. I haven't even seen it yet. So right now it's uh, 15 minutes and 22 seconds into this video. So let's see how quickly I went from putting it on the list to actually getting into a trade. And I'll tell you what the significance of that is in just a second. So here we are. This is my first time seeing it. It's now 1526 into the video. My first time seeing it and now I'm already in the stock four seconds later basically. So um, the, the reason why I'm pointing that out is because if you learn your plan and your strategy and after a lot of practice, you know, I've been doing this a while now, I traded like this in the pre-market for, for about six months and then now, you know, I'm doing it in the market open. So I have a lot of practice with this. So after lots of practice and continuous reading of your trading plan, I read mine every single day, no matter what, before I start trading. That way it's very fresh in my mind then uh, you may be able to get into stocks like this in a matter of seconds after a uh, quick evaluation, knowing that you actually should be taking this trade with 100% certainty. 
So this trade is obviously trading above the previous day high and the uh, pre-market high, which is right here. So that's my signal to look for an entry. And then my entry is always after a pullback. Here's the pullback candle right here. And then whenever a one minute candle makes a new high, that's when I'm supposed to get in. The high of this candle you can see is 409, so 410 is my ideal entry, and that's what I was able to get even after just looking at this thing for four seconds. So I'm not patting myself on the back. In fact, this trade ended up stopping me out, but it's still a perfectly executed trade. It meets my criteria and my plan 100%, and I was able to uh, execute it again. I'm not bragging at all. I'm just trying to show you that if you really practice hard and, and take a lot of time before you um, you know, go full position size, you can get really good at whatever your system is, and then when you go full position size, you know you're doing the right thing. You have that confidence built up, and if the trade fails, it doesn't bother you because you know you executed it perfectly and you did everything right. So I'm already looking for other trades because that one's all set up. Looking for other entries. AMC also popped at this point. It was number one on that uh, top 10, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. So um, right now I marked out the previous day and previous session high. So we're trading above it. And now I just need to wait for the pullback and the break of a one minute candle to get in. And, and again, I'm, I'm looking at for other possible entries. So RELI, as I said, actually stopped me out. You can see the price came down just below where my stop loss was. It stopped me out. And then um, it gave me the next entry, which is for the break of the next one minute candle. That's what my plan and my strategy says. As soon as I get stopped out of a trade and uh, the, the price is still above point A, you know, which you can maybe define point A down here or here, whatever, obviously it's still trading above point A then I need to get in for the break of the next one minute candle. And ideally you can take three trades doing that. The second trade, I, I believe based on my data that I've been tracking for over six months now, that the second trade is more likely to, to work than the first trade. And then the third trade is even more likely to work than the second trade if of course those first two stop you out. And that's based on actual data, not just assumptions or statistics or anything like that. Well, it is based on statistics that I've collected, I mean. All right, so AMC there, uh, let's just take a look at the entry. So I think when I came back to, the, to AMC, let's just see it in real time here. Okay, so AMC already triggered my entry. It broke out above that previous candle, but it's still trading right around that area, so I can still get in as soon as I realize that. And um, I get filled at 1133.5, and I think 1131 was my ideal entry. So very close on a stock. This price, two cents is nothing. And um, my stop loss goes below the, the lowest point of these candles here because this is my entry candle. And uh, whichever one of these is lowest is where I would put my, my uh, stop because they're kind of like a consolidation. At least the bottom of them are. Um, so... Again, using the 2R calculator, come up with my 2R profit target, which I think was 1167, if I remember. Yeah, again, I had to move the uh, chart a little bit here to get it where I want to. There you go, 1167. And now this trade is done. I don't have to do anything. I can go and look for other entries. And again, RELI stopped me out once again. So even though this was a good setup, a uh, really strong setup, it unfortunately didn't work, and that happens, and that's why we uh, have our stop losses in place. So uh, I've only taken two trades on this, so I can take another entry. Looking back after I was done trading, this uh, was, even though within this trade, I can still take another entry. Uh, I think I'd already got stopped out three times and I thought it was, it was only two. So it's still an error entry, but I did make a record of that on the um, spreadsheet, which I'll show you at the end, so that it doesn't screw up my data and make it look like I'm doing better than I am. So let's see here. Fast forwarding, just waiting for one minute candle to make a new high, there it is. So look, I'm hovering over this candle. It has a high of 380. So as soon as I see this thing pop above 380, which I think it did actually pop there. See, it goes 387, so I trigger my hotkeys. I get filled with 383, so that's great. 
um, didn't get filled near the top. 381 was my ideal entry, so very close. And again, this is like a little bit of a consolidation as far as the bottom of these candles are concerned. So I just put it at the low, just below the low of that consolidation. And then my profit target is uh, adjusted appropriately so that I'm winning two times my risk. 425. So I bring that down. So this trade is all set. I don't have to do anything else. And I go back. I think that this is it. This is my last two trades. And you can see that uh, AMC, this is also very interesting. AMC came up one cent away from my profit target. Now this is mistakes that I used to make early on is I would feel like, oh man, it was so close. Let me just pull my target down. And uh, you know, I, I'm ending, ending up, instead of taking a two hour trade, maybe a 1.5 our trade and in the long run you're not going to be profitable doing that so uh, you know and I saw that actually proved that with data that um, if I would have only held all the trades till 2R even the ones that didn't ever get to 2R overall I would be profitable uh, whereas when I pulled those profit targets down I screwed up the statistics so badly that uh, I was not profitable in the long run doing that So let's see here. So AMC again, you know, coming back down, but you can't really worry about this stuff. You, your plan was to ride this out to two R or get stopped out. So even if it came all the way back down and stopped me out, I wouldn't care because that's what my plan says that I need to do. So um, there's no adjusting once you're in the trade, uh, as long as you did everything right from the get go, you know, put your stop in the appropriate place and your profit target, you can't move it. You just leave it where it is and whatever happens, happens. And I have gotten stopped out by one cent a couple of times, but it's definitely the, the exception to the rule and it's no excuse for moving your profit target down because it's not in your plan to do that anyway. All right, so I guess I, I screwed up here because I walked away. I thought I left it on AMC. So this is the last time you see AMC in this video, but if you look down here, you're gonna see where I got filled. Uh, this is the beauty of these bracket orders is that you can walk away. I guess I left it on um, RELI, I believe. Maybe, let's see, no, that was on page two. No, unfortunately, you, you're not gonna see any of these fill uh, on screen here, but you will see the notifications and I'll show you the orders in Weeble. So you can see I'm not just pulling your leg. There's one right there and it's trying to find it. Uh, okay. So it said my stop order, I'm trying to get it to where I can stop. Okay, so your order to sell one share of AMC has been filled at 1167. That was my two hour profit target. And then there's telling me it canceled the stop order. And then RELI is the last one. Let's see, where's the, I'm just looking for there, the notification. Your stop order to sell has been canceled. So that means my profit target was hit. There it is, your order to sell one share has been filled at 425. So two winning trades uh, out of five. So that's a 40% win rate, which is still in the green theoretically, because all I need with 2R all or nothing is a 33% win rate or better. Uh, better than that to be profitable, 33% is break even. So that's it. So let me show you all the orders in Weeble so you can see I'm not uh, hiding anything. Today's orders, filled orders. All right, so here we go. So anytime, here's a quick way to look at this. You see this filled time, anytime they're two together like that, see two adjacent ones, that means that was a losing trade, losing trade. And buy and sell, losing trade. Now here you see there's a gap between them, buy and sell. So, and you can also see obviously by the price. I bought it at 1134, sold it at 1167. That was the winning trade with AMC. And then the same thing here, you see that gap, 383 is where I bought it and sold it at 425. So that was a winning trade. PL is basically break even. That doesn't really mean anything right now because I'm just trading one share. So it's not going to uh, tell us anything about what the PL will be like when I'm doing this. All I'm doing is collecting uh, win rate data and trying to get above 33%. So I know when these trades are actually proportional to one another, meaning that I'm trading with 10% of my account on each trade, that as long as I'm above that 33% win rate, I will be in the green PL wise. So here we go. So let me just point out something here because there's a lot of red on this chart. You know, it looks really bad. And again, remember I said the markets have been very choppy lately. 
this I think I said that I might have been in another attempt to making this video but the market's been very choppy lately so this is a great time to test a new strategy because if you can make it through markets that, that we're seeing right now and even just break even when things are better you're gonna be doing really well so um, right now we're basically at break even now th this is I'm calculating this of multiple ways so that the data is just that much more meaningful this number here is just the average of all of these numbers but this is actually using the number of trades I've taken, uh, 38 trades, and I've had 13 wins. So this is more realistic or more accurate for just the individual trades themselves. So my win rate of all the trades is 34.21%, but it's good that these numbers are close together because that, that just tells you that the data is that much more accurate. And then when I removed all the error trades, which are not the red trades, but the ones that are boxed in red, that means that uh, those were trades that I shouldn't have taken and I took accidentally thinking they were trades I should have been taking. Uh, that win rate is 36.36%, so a little bit better still. But again, I know that you know we're very close to break even and you could argue that you know why would I work this hard to, um, to day trade just to be so close to break even and that's an absolutely valid point. And these are all things that I'm trying to show you here is that even with a great plan, that day trading is still really hard and you might do everything right and just be a little bit better than break even and you have to decide is that enough for you to uh, want to day trade or not so um, the, the whole point of this right now is just to get to a hundred trades I'm at 38 trades and and we want to see if we can be better than break even we want this these numbers to be above 33 percent so right now we're just barely above it hopefully things get a little better and that number moves a little higher but we won't know until we get to 100 trades. So anyway, those are all the trades. Let me scroll through and you can just take a look at each one. If you want to pause and see the data, you can look at things like the uh, return on investment and the risk and all that kind of stuff. Again, this was a green trade, but I boxed it in red because it was an error. I didn't realize I'd already lost three uh, trades at that point, which means I was supposed to stop looking for trades. Um, so this was this is a trade that I shouldn't have taken even though it ended up being a green trade so that's why it's boxed in red and it's not included in this calculation here so um, I mean I keep you track of all of this stuff so that at the end we really know is this thing really working or not all right guys so hopefully this is helpful to you if it is hit the like if you're not subscribed subscribe but the main point here is that no matter what you hear someone else say that this system works, whatever system they're trying to push on you, test it yourself. You know, even if they're showing you their P&L, uh, people can hide things many different ways and make it look like they're making money when they're not. So my advice to you is that whatever system strategy that you want to try, even if it's something you've come up with yourself based on back testing and paper trading, that's not enough. Trade one share until you have proven it profitable with 100 trades or more. So anyway, hopefully the uh, point is very clear there. Anyway, uh, as always, Take your stop losses no matter what, honor your profit target, and in the long run, you should be green. Take care.